Hello, welcome back to our channel. Today we want to reflect back on the history of assassinations attempts on US presidents. Kindly remember to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. And with no further ado, let's hop in. Assassination attempts and plots on the President of the United States have been numerous, ranging from the early 19th century to the 2010s. For sitting presidents have been killed, Abraham Lincoln, 1865, by John Wilkes Booth, James A. Garfield, 1881, by Charles J. Guiteau, William Kinley, 1901, by Leon Cholgos, and John F. Kennedy, 1963, by Lee Harvey Oswald. Additionally, two presidents have been injured in attempted assassinations, former President Theodore Roosevelt, 1912, by John Flamang Schrank and Ronald Reagan, 1981, by John Hinckley Jr. In all of these cases, the attacker's weapon was a firearm. Abraham Lincoln The assassination of Abraham Lincoln, the 16th President of the United States, took place on Good Friday, April 14, 1865, at Ford's Theatre in Washington, D.C., at about 10, 15 p.m. The assassin, John Wilkes Booth, was a well-known actor and a Confederate sympathizer from Maryland, though he never joined the Confederate Army, he had contacts within the Confederate Secret Service. In 1864, Booth formulated a plan, very similar to one of Thomas N. Conrad previously authorized by the Confederacy to kidnap Lincoln in exchange for the release of Confederate prisoners. After attending an April 11, 1865, speech in which Lincoln promoted voting rights for black people, Booth decided to assassinate the president instead. Learning that the president would be attending Ford's theater, Booth formulated a plan with co-conspirators to assassinate Lincoln at the theater, as well as Vice President Andrew Johnson and Secretary of State William H. Seward, at their homes. Lincoln attended the play Our American Cousin at Ford's theater. As the president sat in his state box in the balcony watching the play with his wife Mary and two guests, Major Henry Rathbone and his fiancée Clara Harris, Booth entered from behind. He aimed a 44 caliber Derringer pistol at the back of Lincoln's head and fired, mortally wounding him. Rathbone momentarily grappled with Booth, but Booth stabbed him and escaped. An unconscious Lincoln was examined by doctors and taken across the street to the Peterson house. After remaining in a coma for eight hours, Lincoln died at 7.22 a.m. on April 15. As he died, his breathing grew quieter, his face calmer. According to some accounts, at his last drawn breath, on the morning after the assassination, he smiled broadly and then expired. Beyond Lincoln's death, the plot failed, Seward was only wounded and Johnson's would-be attacker did not follow through. After being on the run for 12 days, Booth was tracked down and found on April 26, 1865, by Union Army soldiers on a farm in Virginia, some 110 kilometers, 70 miles south of Washington. After refusing to surrender, Booth was fatally shot by Union cavalryman Boston Corbett. For other conspirators were later hanged for their roles in the conspiracy. James A. Garfield the assassination of James A. Garfield, the 20th President of the United States, began at the Baltimore and Potomac Railroad Station in Washington, D.C., at 9.30 a.m. on Saturday, July 2, 1881, less than four months after he took office. As the President was arriving at the train station, writer and lawyer Charles J. Guiteau shot him twice with a 442 Webley British Bulldog revolver, one bullet grazed the President's shoulder, and the other pierced his back. For the next 11 weeks, Garfield endured medical malpractice before dying on September 19, 1881, at 10, 35 p.m., of complications caused by iatrogenic infections, which were contracted by the doctor's relentless probing of his wound with unsterilized fingers and instruments. He had survived for a total of 79 days after being shot. Guiteau was immediately arrested. After a highly publicized trial lasting from November 14, 1881, to January 25, 1882, he was found guilty and sentenced to death. 
a subsequent appeal was rejected, and he was executed by hanging on June 30, 1882, in the District of Columbia, two days before the first anniversary of the shooting. Guiteau was assessed during his trial as mentally unbalanced or from the effects of neurosyphilis. He claimed to have shot Garfield out of disappointment at being passed over for appointment as ambassador to France. He attributed the president's victory in the election to a speech he wrote in support of Garfield. William Kinley The assassination of United States President William Kinley took place at 4, 7 p.m. on Friday, September 6, 1901, at the Temple of Music in Buffalo, New York. Kinley, attending the Pan American Exposition, was shot twice in the abdomen at close range by Leon Cholgos, an anarchist, who was armed with a 32 caliber revolver that was concealed underneath a handkerchief. The first bullet ricocheted off either a button or an award medal on Kinley's jacket and lodged in his sleeve, the second shot pierced his stomach. Although Kinley initially appeared to be recovering, his condition rapidly declined due to gangrene setting in around his wounds and he died on September 14, 1901, at 2, 15 a.m. Members of the crowd, started by James Benjamin Parker, subdued and captured Chol Goss. Afterward, the 4th Brigade, National Guard Signal Corps, and police intervened, beating Chol Goss so severely it was initially thought he might not live to stand trial. On September 24, after a two-day trial, in which the defendant refused to defend himself, Chol Goss was convicted and later sentenced to death. The electric chair executed him in Auburn Prison on October 29, 1901. Chol Goss's actions were politically motivated, although it remains unclear what outcome he believed the shooting would yield. Following President Ginley's assassination, Congress directed the Secret Service to protect the President of the United States as part of its mandate. John F. Kennedy The assassination of United States President John F. Kennedy took place at 12, 30 p.m., 18, 30 UTC on Friday, November 22, 1963, in Dallas, Texas, during a presidential motorcade in Dealey Plaza. Kennedy was riding with his wife Jacqueline, Texas Governor John Connolly, and Connolly's wife, Nellie when he was fatally shot by former U.S. Marine and American defector Lee Harvey Oswald from the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository. He was shot once in the back, the bullet exiting via his throat, and once in the head. Governor Connolly was seriously wounded, and bystander James Tagg received a minor facial injury from a small piece of curbstone that had fragmented after it was struck by one of the bullets. The motorcade rushed to Parkland Memorial Hospital, where President Kennedy was pronounced dead at 1, 0 p.m. Oswald was arrested and charged by the Dallas Police Department for the assassination of Kennedy and for the murder of Dallas policeman J. D. Tippett who was shot dead in a residential neighborhood in the Oak Cliff section of Dallas just hours later. On Sunday, November 24, 1963, while being transferred from the city jail to the county jail, Oswald was fatally shot in the basement of Dallas Police Department headquarters by Dallas nightclub owner Jack Ruby. Ruby was convicted of Oswald's murder, even though it was later overturned on appeal. In 1967, Ruby died in prison while awaiting a new trial. In September 1964, the Warren Commission concluded that Kennedy and Tippett were both killed by Oswald, that Oswald had acted entirely alone in both murders, and that Ruby had acted alone in killing Oswald. Nonetheless, polls conducted from 1966 to 2004 found that up to 80% of Americans surveyed suspected that there was a plot or cover-up to kill President Kennedy. Conspiracy theories have persisted to the present. Theodore Roosevelt Three and a half years after he left office, Theodore Roosevelt ran in the 1912 presidential election as a member of the Progressive Party. While campaigning in Milwaukee, Wisconsin on October 14, 1912, John Flamang Schrank, a saloon keeper from New York who had been stalking him for weeks, shot Roosevelt once in the chest with a .38 caliber Colt Police Positive Special. The 50-page text of his campaign speech titled, Progressive Cause Greater Than Any Individual, was folded over twice in Roosevelt's breast pocket, and a metal glasses case slowed the bullet, saving his life. 
Schrank was immediately disarmed, captured, and might have been lynched had Roosevelt not shouted for Schrank to remain unharmed. Roosevelt assured the crowd he was all right, then ordered police to take charge of Schrank and to make sure no violence was done to him. Roosevelt, as an experienced hunter and anatomist, correctly concluded that since he was not coughing blood, the bullet had not reached his lung, and he declined suggestions to go to the hospital immediately. Instead, he delivered his scheduled speech with blood seeping into his shirt. He spoke for 84 minutes before completing his speech and accepting medical attention. Afterward, probes and an X-ray showed that the bullet had lodged in Roosevelt's chest muscle, but did not penetrate the pulmonary pleury. Doctors concluded that it would be less dangerous to leave it in place than to attempt to remove it, and Roosevelt carried the bullet with him for the rest of his life. He spent two weeks recuperating before returning to the campaign trail. Despite his tenacity, Roosevelt ultimately lost his bid for re-election to the Democratic candidate Woodrow Wilson. At Schrank's trial, the would-be assassin claimed that William Ginley had visited him in a dream and told him to avenge his assassination by killing Roosevelt. He was found legally insane and was institutionalized until he died in 1943. That marks the end of our episode today, thanks for watching.